Um, so by way of introduction uh, and background, we were founded in 2007 by two top coronary stent inventors looking to apply their fluid dynamics expertise to a new clinical challenge. We're developing the only minimally invasive micro stent that dilates and scaffolds the natural primary outflow path of the eye. We've got 25 folks in the company. We've raised $107 million to date. We've treated 2,500 patients globally, about half of those as standalone procedures, which Ike referred to earlier. And we completed enrollment in our US Pivotal trial in May of 2015. So um, Ike asked me to talk a little bit about how we're going to differentiate in an increasingly crowded space with some great competitors who've already spoken, who I'd, who I'd like to congratulate, by the way, for their great work in this space. The first is through our technology. This is our implant. This is the proximal end of the device that resides in the anterior chamber where aqueous humor enters the body of the device. You see the body of the device that scaffolds Schlem's canal. You see the three windows that face trabecular meshwork. The device is crescent shaped to allow it to track smoothly through Schlem's canal. And then the outside of the device that actually faces the collector channels is wide open so as not to obstruct or disrupt the collector channels. That little structure you see on the lower left there in yellow, Schlem's Canal, it's naturally elliptically shaped. Our device goes in, dilates that, and increases the cross-sectional diameter by about four to five times its natural size. People refer to it as an outflow multiplier. This is our uh, surgical video. You can see the delivery injector against the trabecular meshwork. You see the device going in. We ask the surgeons to look for the three windows of the device as it goes in. It's a very satisfying procedure. They can see that they've stented the canal. You see here the device disengaged from the delivery system. And now what the surgeon is going to do is he's actually looking distally here, and he can see that he has stented the entire nasal quadrant of Schlem's canal. You're looking at three windows of the device there, right through the trabecular meshwork, right into Schlem's canal. So the second way that we intend to differentiate is with uh, superior clinical data within the initial serve MIGS market, which is phaco glaucoma. Um, how do we feel confident about this? Well, four years ago, in anticipation of our U.S. Pivotal trial, we went to Europe and ran a trial that was essentially a replica of our U.S. Pivotal trial, uh, looking at hydrus plus phaco and mild to moderate glaucoma, um, hydrus plus phaco versus phaco alone. And these results at two years were just presented last year in ophthalmology. And you can see, if you look on the right, at 24 months, the hydrus was 80% successful at two years versus only 46% for the control group. This was a highly statistically significant result. It gives us great confidence for what we're going to see in our U.S. Pivotal trial. And this was the most resounding result in the MIG space in a level one trial to date at two years. Next slide, please. Third, we feel we're very well positioned to compete in the standalone market, which Ike talked a little bit about earlier. So moving beyond sort of the FACO glaucoma market. As Ike said, a large gap exists between medical therapy and laser and trabeculectomy, and we think MIGS can fill that gap. Efficacy has to be good enough on its own without cataract surgery, though. And we know FACO does have an effect on IOP. For earlier treatment, for the devices to move into the milder patient population, they have to be safe. And we believe the hydrus, through our safe reconstruction of Schlem's canal, is ideally positioned for this standalone space. So if you think of this in terms of the life of the glaucoma patient, and you sort of map this out, I talked about this a little earlier, the treatment paradigm today. Um, patient diagnosed, they get a medication, then maybe they get laser therapy, then they get a couple more meds, and then eventually a cyclodestructive procedure, and then a TRAB or a tube. Um, you know, we live in kind of the Starbucks generation now. The patients want to get off their medications. They go to people like Ike, they want to get off their meds. They're looking for something uh, earlier to take them off their meds. And so we believe in five to seven years, this is how the treatment paradigm can look. Patients diagnosed, they get a medication or they get laser. Then, the practitioner will try to safely reconstruct their natural outflow canal. Then, if that fails down the road, move to some of the bypass procedures, such as a suprachoroidal procedure, a subconjunctival procedure, then on to a TRAB or a tube. But we think a great opportunity exists for the cataract surgeons, the glaucoma specialists, the anterior segment specialists overall to move earlier in the treatment paradigm and really help patients have a win and not live a life on medications uh, with the burden they've had. Why do we believe our device will work in standalone? Well, as I said, the doctors are voting with their feet. Uh, internationally, over 
90% of our procedures that have been done have been in the standalone setting. Uh, we also sponsored a level one study that Ike is the medical monitor of called the COMPARE study, which is 152 eyes at 12 international MIGS expert centers, no learning curve. And this is a landmark trial looking at MIGS and mild to moderate glaucoma. And this, this trial was completed about 10 months ago in terms of enrollment, we're collecting one year data now and we think it will show viability of the canal based procedures uh, in the standalone population and we intend to pursue an IDE in this space uh, shortly with FDA. And finally, uh, our goal is to leverage the scaffold platform that we have with the hydrus into more complex patients. And so as we go forward, one of the projects we have in place is putting a 24-hour IOP sensor on the Hydrus device. We've got a partnership in place right now with a top university to do that. We're looking at coding the Hydrus device uh, for drug delivery because of the large surface area of the device. We believe we can uh, elude a, a meaningful volume of drug over an eight to 16 month period of time. And finally, uh, uh, our advisors and, and ourselves were excited about the possibilities of synergies between the hydrus and the access it creates to the natural outflow path and some of the exciting bioresorbable uh, drug delivery platforms that are being developed by some of the folks in this room. So that's something we're looking at uh, as well. So these are the ways that we intend to differentiate the hydrus and Ivantis going forward. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm.